Hi all, today we are going to discuss boundary conditions for perfect dielectric materials as well as the boundary conditions between conductor and dielectric boundary conditions. So, for taking the boundary conditions, let us assume there is a boundary. So, one side I am taking the material is having epsilon 2 and this I am taking as region number 2 and the second side this one I am taking as region 1 having a epsilon 1. So, to calculate the value because calculating the value of E, we can take the line integral that is why I have taken this loop. Let us assume this width is equal to delta W. So, the tangential component in this side I am writing as E T 1 and tangential component in the second medium I am taking as E T 2 and let us assume this height is equal to delta H. So, similarly for calculating the normal component I am taking the surface. So, this surface let us assume this is equal to delta S is the surface there. This is D N 1. Let us assume the electric field is moving from region 2 to region 1. So, let us take it as D N 2. So, I am assuming the field is moving from region 2 to region number 1. So, in this case how to calculate? Because we know the surface integral of E dot DL is equal to 0. So, this we can tell that as the delta H tends to 0, the sides become 0. We have already discussed in conductor and free space boundary condition. So, only we have to take the top and bottom layers. So, this will become E T 1 multiplied by delta W minus E T 2 multiplied by delta W is equal to 0. Let us assume I am moving from A B. C D. So, A to B you are moving in same direction as tangential component that is why plus and C to D you are moving in opposite direction. I am assuming I am taking a loop like this. Okay, I hope it is clear to you. So, now from this I can tell that delta W is same. So, this becomes E T 1 is equal to E T 2. So, tangential component 1 is equal to tangential component 2. So, we know that D is equal to epsilon E. So, from that we can tell that D T 1 divided by D T 2 will be equal to epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2 because the reason is d is equal to epsilon e or from that we can take that e is equal to d by epsilon using that also you can calculate this one. Now coming to the calculating the normal component. For calculating the normal component we have seen that it is easy to calculate with d. So, we can tell that d dot ds. So, this will be equal to charge enclosed. Let us assume charge enclosed is equal to q. So, if you are again taking like delta h tends to 0, that height tends to 0, only top and bottom will be there. Only you have to take on the top and bottom. So, top 1 it is equal to dn1 multiplied by delta s and the bottom 1 the dn2 it is in opposite direction to incremental surface. So, that is why we will take as a dn2 multiplied by delta s. So, this will be equal to delta q or this I can write as rho s into delta s. So, from this we can tell that dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s. This is the equation we got. Depending on what is the value of the surface charge density, accordingly we will substitute it. But if you are taking the perfect dielectric material, in the perfect dielectric material the value of rho s is equal to 0. So, obviously this will become dn1 is equal to dn2. So, we know d is equal to epsilon e. So, we can tell that epsilon 1 en1 is equal to epsilon 2 en2 or otherwise we can tell that en1 divided by en2 is equal to epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 1. So, or this I can write because epsilon is nothing but epsilon naught into epsilon r. So, this I can write as en1 divided by en2 is equal to epsilon r2 divided by epsilon r1. This is what we get for perfect dielectric material. So, let us try to analyze further. So, I am assuming let us take one medium is there. So, this side it is epsilon 1, this side it is epsilon 2, two medium are there. Let us assume this is the normal component. So, this is my normal component vector and this will be the tangential vector direction. This is the direction of tangential vector. Let us assume the field is coming at some angle. It is not coming in the tangential or the normal direction. It is making an angle of theta 1. Let us assume this d1 is impressed. So, when it changes from one medium to another medium, it will change its angle. Let us see how the angle is going to change. So, this I am taking as d2. Let us assume it is making an angle of theta 2 in the second side. So, this is the dielectric interface in the dielectric interface. So, now we know the value of dt1 by dt2 is equal to epsilon1 by epsilon2 this is direct or from this I can tell my value of dt2 is equal to epsilon2 divided by epsilon1 into dt1. So, now from the figure I can write that dn1 is equal to d1 cos theta1 and dt1 is equal to d1 sin theta1 this is the first one and second one. So, from this I can write that dn2, dn2 will be equal to 
d1 cos theta 1 and dt2 will be equal to epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 into d1 sin theta 1 just applying the basic principles so sin theta 1 so from this i can calculate my value of the d2 if d1 is known so this will be equal to square root of dn2 square plus dt2 square because x component square plus y component square so this i am substituting in terms of d1 so dn2 i can write in terms of d1 this one will be equal to d1 cos theta 1 whole square plus epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 into this one whole square into sin square theta 1 because epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 sin theta 1 square so that i have separated so similar way I can calculate my value of E2 because we know that this I can write as epsilon 2 into E2 is equal to epsilon 1 into E1 that is D1. So here also one more thing is missing right here D1 is also missing D1 is missing. So epsilon into E1 so this I can separate them out this will become cos square theta 1 plus epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 whole square into sin square theta 1. So, this way I can write it. So, from this I can summarize my value of E2 is equal to E1 into square root of epsilon 1 by epsilon 2 whole square cos square theta 1 plus sin square theta 1. This is what we have obtained. This is the value of E2. So, now we know how to calculate the value of D2 and how to calculate the value of E2 also. Okay. So, this is the value of D2, right? So, I am just summarizing this one. So, let us see the dielectric and conductor boundary conditions. So, then we will proceed for the numericals. So, let us take the conductor and dielectric boundary conditions. So, for that again I am taking one surface. Let us take one side the medium is the conductor. So, I am taking this as the conductor this side. So, this is medium 2. And in the first side, there is a medium 1, let us assume it is some dielectric material epsilon. So, to calculate the normal component, I take the surface as a similar. So, S is there and this height is delta H. So, similarly to calculate the tangential component, I will take a loop, let us assume A, B, C, D, we are following in this loop. So, this tangential component will be, this is ET, this will be equal to the value of EN and the resultant of these two gives my resultant value of E. So, how to calculate these components now? So, closed surface, closed line integral of E dot dl is equal to 0. This is what we know. So, this I can write as ET1 into delta W minus EN into delta H divided by 2 minus delta W because we are going in the opposite direction. So, this will be equal to ET2 plus En into delta H divided by 2 is equal to 0. So, as the H tends to 0, so this one will cancel out. Similarly, this ET2 because inside the conductor this tangential component is equal to 0. So, this component will go. So, your resultant will come as ET1 is equal to 0. So, obviously, the DT1 also will be equal to 0. So, tangential component is obtained. Now, coming to the normal component. So, for the normal component, we can write DN into delta S minus 0 times of delta s because in the conductor that normal component of the flux density that also will be equal to 0. So, this will be equal to delta q. So, this will be equal to rho s into delta s. So, from this I can tell that the normal component is equal to rho s or from this I can calculate my en will be equal to dn divided by epsilon or this will be equal to rho s divided by epsilon or from this I can write my value of normal component is equal to rho s and En is equal to rho s by epsilon. I hope up to here it is clear to you. So, let us take one example so that this concept will be completely clear to you. I am just taking one example. The region y less than 0 contains a dielectric material for which epsilon r1 is equal to 2.5 while the region y greater than 0 is characterized by epsilon r2 is equal to 4, let e1 is equal to minus 30 times of ax plus 50 times of ay plus 70 times of az volts per meter and find the value of dn2 dt2 d2 
P2 and P theta 2. This is what is asked. Let us try to solve it. So, I am just taking the region y is equal to 0 as my reference. So, here it is given there that E is imposing like this. This is my value of E. This is for y less than 0. So, epsilon R1 is equal to 2.5. So, let us take this as y greater than 0. So, this is epsilon R2 is equal to 4. This is what is given. So, let us assume it is making an angle of theta. So, how the remaining components are coming? So, this we have to make. Let us assume this is the positive y axis, whichever y axis we take it. So, now we can calculate y values. We have just derived dn1 is equal to dn2. So, this will be equal to epsilon naught epsilon r1 into en1. This will be equal to epsilon naught into 2.5 into 50. Epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power of minus 12. If you substitute, this will become 1.107 nano coulombs per meter square. So, now coming to the second part. So, second part it is asked to calculate dt. So, tangential component we can calculate et easily from that we can calculate dt. So, we know that et2 is equal to et1 is equal to minus 30 times of ax plus 70 times of ag. This is the tangential component. Tangential component means which is the tangential component because y axis is a vertical line. So, x and z component will be the tangential components for this or the tangential plane for this. So, from this we can calculate my value of dt2 is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r into et2. So, this will become equal to 4 times of epsilon naught into minus 30 times of ax plus 70 times of ay. This is what we get. So, now this if you substitute, so this I can substitute as 4 times of epsilon naught into, if you want to calculate the magnitude, magnitude will be minus 30 square plus 70 square. So, this will be equal to 2.697 nano coulombs per meter square. This is the value of tangential component. So, now the part C, it is asked to calculate the value of D2. The value of D2 will be equal to the vector sum of DT2 plus DN2. So, this I can write as 4 times of epsilon naught into minus 30 times of ax plus 70 times of az plus 2.5 times of epsilon naught into 50 times of ay. This is the second component in the y direction. So, total sum will become minus 1.062 in the direction of ax plus 1.107 in the direction of ay plus 2.479 in the direction of az. This is in nano coulombs per meter square. So, we know that d2 is equal to epsilon naught e2 plus p2, right. So, therefore, we can write the value of p2 will be equal to minus epsilon naught e2 plus the value of d2. This way, I can calculate this. So, from this, I can calculate my value. This e2 is equal to e t2 plus e n2. Let us calculate one by one. So, this will become e t2 plus epsilon r1 divided by epsilon r2 divided by e n1 multiplied by en1. So, this will become equal to minus 30 times of ax plus 70 times of az plus 2.5 divided by 4 times of 50 times of ay. This is what we get. So, this will become minus 30 times of ax plus 31.25 times of ay plus 70 times of az plus 70 times of az. So, this is what we get. So, this et1 en1. So, these things are obtained. So, now I want to calculate my value of P. So, the value of P2 if you want to calculate P2 will be minus epsilon naught times of E2 and I have to add D2. So, if you calculate minus epsilon naught times of D2 plus E2, then you will get your final answer as 0 0.797 in the direction of AX plus 0 0.830 in the direction of AY plus 1.859 in the direction of AZ nano coulombs per meter square. You just substituted here D2 is already known. Just substitute it and calculate the final value. That is what we have to do. Now, coming to the part E, it is given as calculate the value of tan theta 1 divided by tan theta 2. So, it is asked to calculate the value of theta 2. So, tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 is equal to epsilon 1 by epsilon 2. So, that is why from here we can calculate tan theta 2 is equal to epsilon 2 into tan theta 1 divided by epsilon 1. This will be 4 divided by 2.5 into tan of 56.7. So, this will come as 2.43576 or from this we can calculate the value of theta 2 is equal to 67.68 degrees. 
So in this way, you have to make the calculations. I hope the boundary conditions for dielectric dielectric boundary as well as the dielectric conductor boundary conditions are clear to you. So if you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.